years. Okay, so I thought I'd show you guys the missing electrolytic capacitor is the C5 capacitor. I've been tracing it out. There, there's three parts to it. They're all 10 microfarad. The first part, A, is part of the video uh, detector and AGC amp circuit. And then the next part, which is this one right here, well it's the third section because it's C, is right here which is part of the video output circuit. comes out between this little voltage divider circuit right here. And then if I scroll on up, I should be able to find the other one. Here we go. It's in this power supply circuit. It is right here. And that's uh, the third section, C5B. So I got that traced out. I figured out where the wires were for that. Um, they were had been chopped and spliced, but I figured out which one was which. And uh, let me go over to the frame now and show you the chassis. All right, so I've got all the tubes out. Well, almost all of them. I don't have one of the uh, high voltage tubes out here. Here's where it was missing from. Here's wires that I extended up in here. This one I'll probably have to extend a little bit more. They're going to get shoved back in there when I get the cap. I'm probably going to make it a base that's going to hold the caps, the three caps, and it'll screw to this. Um, I've been trying to clean it up a little bit. Obviously pretty rusty there. I found interesting here in the high voltage supply box. I believe that's supposed to be a fuse. It's aluminum pole. I think wrapped around a fuse. Might need to be wrapped around a fuse. It's aluminum pole. Interesting. So I'm not holding out a whole lot of hope in this thing. I'm going to go ahead and pull this cover off here. Get this tube out. I can probably get it out now, but as I got that one out. But um, I think I'm going to go ahead and pull that cover off. Take that tube out, clean it, clean this chassis up. I basically have cleaned all the tubes here. And uh, the shields were all pretty rusty. I kind of hit those with uh, some 4 out steel wool. Just to clean them up a little bit, and then I'm waiting for those caps to come in. I didn't have three 500 volt caps um, and 10 microfarad, or even close. I didn't have a 12 or a 14 or anything. I, so I was out of my eights. I was going to try an eight if I had it, but I was out of them. Anyway, I figured what I'm going to do, and I did make a cover for my speaker, so I'll put my finger through it. What I'm planning on doing is just getting it all cleaned up. You know, a light cleanup. I also labeled these with marker. I noticed after I started cleaning, somebody else had labeled them with an engraver, I think, because it doesn't seem to rub off when I clean. And I've also found some tubes that are different. So I'm probably going to put it back the way it shows on the diagram, not necessarily what was in here. I'm checking to see if the tubes that were in here were good substitutes. I think it had six BC5s in it, and they were supposed to be six AG5s. A lot of six BC5s. There was one six AU6, I think, in one of these slots, too, that the diagram shows it's supposed to be six BC5. So, i got to get the right tubes for it. But, um, anyway, once I get the tubes cleaned up, I'm going to test them all. If they all test fine, then I'm going to go ahead and put them back in here. And before I do anything with any of the caps or resistors or anything like that, I'm going to bring it very, bring it up very slow. On actually not this one, but this one. We're going to bring it up real slow on here so I can monitor the volts and the amps. This has the electronic circuit breaker. 
um, I'll, probably, I'll probably bring it up on both but while I'm bringing it up slow I'm going to be monitoring the amps and I'm going to be monitoring the temperature of these caps and I'll be monitoring for smoke because I want to see if it will do anything at all or if it just goes up in smoke or whatever because I'm not going to invest a bunch of money in this I I went out and priced just just the electrolytic caps through Mauser for about fifty dollars not including shipping I bought the three 10 UF caps on eBay and they're coming slow boat from China and they were like eight something I think for three for five of them maybe it was five of them so I figured it was worth that money just to replace the, the cap that's missing and see if this thing is even looking like it's going to be anything that I can get possibly running I'm not going to put a bunch of time which it'll take a lot of time because it's everything's tight underneath there I'm not going to put a bunch of time or effort in this when it's way beyond my capability to start with but if I can make it safe enough to bring a slow power up and see if it has possibility then I might change my mind and go ahead and try it but I want to uh, make it safe for me to bring it up and uh, we'll go from there okay so I got the chassis cleaned up as good as I'm gonna clean it, it cleaned up pretty decent everything I got all the dead roaches and carcasses of bugs and everything off of it and wiped all the dust off put a little paint on the transformer clean the rust off of that there's some staining going on in the actual chassis that I scrubbed and it, it don't come off. I'm not sure what it was, but it didn't come off. I'm not planning on polishing this thing or nothing. It is clean. I created myself a cheater cord for it and uh, I got all the tubes tested and cleaned up. There's all the tubes all tested and cleaned up. I had uh, one bad 7F8 two 6BC5s that were good once they came on they just took a really long time to come on I had a couple others that didn't so that and a, and a 6 AQ5 that also was slow to come on so I just went ahead and placed an order with Bob DeBush to replace those particular tubes and got the shields all cleaned up right now I'm waiting on those three 10 microfarad electrolytics to come in tubes from Bob Dobush and uh, I'll be ready to try and bring a slow voltage power up on it and I've actually got an unexpected 50 degree day today so I've got the high voltage um, box I cleaned that all up and I painted it outside so once it uh, gets dry I'll stick it back on here okay so I'm going to see about getting the pitcher tube and the yoke out of this cabinet to do the power up I need to at least have that yoke plugged into the chassis pitcher tube doesn't have to be but the yoke does um, looks like a couple of screws here hold those braces which screw on but then I've got uh, three big nuts down there uh, one thing I was noticing on the cabinet here this I don't know this looks original here but that nails not and down here this one's broke off it's got a nail there as well and a foot was left of it and then this one it's just got a bent over nail I'm sure it might have been something with the foot but boy that would have been scratching the hell I know it scratched my floor and then that one's the same way as nail bent over in there nothing like any type of finish on the bottom of this it's pretty rough actually but uh, I'll probably get you on a pedestal and see if you can see me do this
Okay, so I got the pitcher tube stripped down of the yolk. I've taken it as far as I'm going to take it. I'm going to clean it all up. And then I'll be able to take that yolk and plug it into the chassis when I'm ready to give it a power up. And uh, just make sure the transformers and everything seem like they come up and power up the tube. So I'll uh, get this cleaned up. Okay, so while I wait for some parts, I started cleaning up the pitcher tube, disassembled the ion trap magnet, the uh, focus coil, and the um, and uh, cleaned all that all up. This section right here was all rusted really bad, so I got that all rust de-rusted and painted it and clean it off where it needs to make good ground put some fish paper in here the old fish paper was terrible I've still got to clean the focus coil up it's got some heavy rust on the bottom of it and uh, there's the ion trap magnet but I come across a problem. I hadn't seen it before. This section here, that was pretty much going off of it, and it's hard as a rock, and it looks burnt. You go down further, and the plug was all broken and goobied up. There was black tarry crap in there that was all hard and goobered up, but that plug is all broke, and that's all singed. Now above this it feels fine, it's soft. So I guess what I'm going to do is cut these off and come up with a different socket. It's an 8 pin octal socket. Okay, so here's what I did. I found an 8 pin octal tube and I dismounted the bulb portion from it and I will solder new wires into that and then run those wires up to the area where I cut them off shorter and we'll get that all soldered together and hopefully that'll work out. Okay so I just got through getting the new wiring soldered into the pins of that 8 pin octal tube base and uh, once I got that in there then I pulled them together with the tie wrap and I filled it up with epoxy. So the epoxy went all the way down into the key so that's good so it will be nice and solid and uh, it's non-conductive so it should be good. So there's that there's the old one next to it and it's brokenness and that's going to be the replacement. I'll show you this. This is cleaning up well. Transformer cleaned up nice. I painted that. I've got my high voltage covers all repainted and straightened out. And good to go. I still got to attach this chain right here. And there's a ground strap that goes from that up to the uh, trap area. And I got to take care of that. I'm supposed to have a fuse here today. Or in here. I'm still waiting on my capacitors. I told you they were coming slow boat from China and they're not here yet. So we'll just keep doing what we can until then. I did see that there is a 0.047 capacitor in here that I'm going to change out. It, it's a 400 volt. And I got 650 so it should be fine. I did change resistors. There was a 680 resistor in there, 680K resistor in there that uh, tested out at almost a meg. So I changed that and there was a 4.7 ohm that I changed out because it was reading like 6.2. So I'll show you those when I get the cover back off. Okay, so I got the high voltage box back off again. So now you can see some of the work I did inside of here. So this was the 0.047 that according to the parts list I think it was C102 I'm running from memory I think it's C102 so it was 0.047 at 400 volts 
I put in a 0.047 at 630 volts so that should be fine. Now what came out of it was a here it is right here. I'm pretty sure this was aftermarket. Might not have been, I don't know. But it was a 0.05 at 1000 volts which there's only one cap in this set that I could find on the part list that is a 1000 volt and it was a 0 0.0068 and yeah, this was not it. Now I tested this before I pulled it out and it was measuring 0.2 so I'm close to 0 0.047 but uh, I changed it. Be it right or be it wrong I changed it. And down here are the two resistors I changed. This was the um, 4.7 ohm that was testing at 6.2 or 3. This combination here, now these are all 2 watt resistors right here. This combination here, this is replacing a 680,000 ohm resistor that was testing at close to a meg. This combination I got here comes in at 683,000 it's only 3,000 off from the 680s uh, it's stating. This wire here, they had soldered and spliced a little tiny wire on here that uh, they put a little bit of liquid electrical tape barely on it. So I went ahead and I upsized the wire a little bit and I realized it's not the high voltage wire like this but I heat shrunk it several times before this last layer so I'm hoping that that'll be good enough and uh, I think that's about it. I put a little tape on here. Kind of hold this together. It looks fine. The windings are fine. But you can actually grab the body and slide it right off of there. And I don't think that's supposed to slide on there. So I went ahead kind of as a temporary repair until I find out more about it with some Kapton tape on there. And I got my new quarter amp fuse in there. So I think this thing is about ready for me to Put the box back on. I did put a little liquid electrical tape here yesterday. I did put some on the front right here but I'm going to redo it because that mine was really old and it didn't go very well. So I bought a new a new can. I don't have any of the uh, dope that Bob Anderson talks about to coat that with. It's not it's not bad anyway. So I think where it's got problems I'll just throw some liquid electrical tape on there. And uh, they had some on this too, on the one that came out, so I'll probably just throw a little bit on the sides of that. But uh, I think that's ready to go back together again. So once I get that done, then I'm going to work on that cap, which I'm dreading because it's going to be tight to get those wires all hooked up. Okay, so I got the CRT all cleaned up. Took the deflection yoke, the focus coil, and the ion trap all off. Clean them all up. Cleaned off rust that was in there. Put some new fish paper in there. Corrected these two wires here that had been cut. Figured out that they had put a new focus coil at some point. The wires were slightly like this one was red to red and that was green to brown. And that's why it had the, uh, the old cloth tape on there. But I wanted to get rid of the cloth tape. Tested the focus coil. Ran about 185 ohms I believe when I checked it. Got my cable all fixed and corrected with the new epoxied end I put on there. So that's as good as I can make it. That's ready to go back in. I also created a new C5 capacitor with 310 microfarad 500 volt caps in it. So you can see them in there. The big lead stick grounds all tied together. <clears throat> the negatives. But uh, I made it look like a, a normal cap can other than I put a top with a hole in it so they can breathe. Alright there's my new C5 cap that I made and um, 3D printed it. I was trying to emulate the one next to it which that needs to be tape back there. It was originally a silver can, I'm pretty sure. I don't know for a fact it was. Yeah, I do because the, the drawings and the pictures show that it was. But I was trying to make it 
kind of fit in and emulate it, but obviously it's not the same. So that turned out pretty good. The other thing I had to do was on the actual picture tube CRT connector, this grid wire right here was broken off and it was just hanging. I had no idea what it was originally. I had to check the schematic, check some photos, realized it was the um, the grid on there. So anyway, I didn't tie it into those other wires because in the photo that I found online it was hanging loose like that and coming out that little hole down there that comes out. Because I thought that that looked like somebody I don't know what I thought it was, but it looked like something somebody ran through there. But I found a photo online and it was coming out, so I assumed they had those separated for a reason. So, alright, I'm going to get my high voltage box back on, because as you can see I still got that off. Let me get that back on and then uh, get the tubes populated and get everything put back in the cabinet. I originally was going to try and power this thing out of the cabinet, but with the pitcher tube it's just going to be easier to do it in the cabinet because you can slide this chassis in and out just by unplugging that one connector that I had to remake. So let me get that set up.